um, the many telephone calls and emails and visits over the last days have evidenced an energetic or a theme that's present at the moment and it evoked a story that's already been told that may just hit the spot for all of us relative to that energy. It's a story in a time long ago in a place far away as a lot of these stories are about a rather enlightened king who had an only and a very beloved son who he had trained from the earliest age in the ways of preparation to become a great monarch, an heir to the throne. And this young prince had proved himself in the arena with the weapons of war to be brave and fearless and in the ways of uh, statesmanship and diplomacy he was found to be affable and caring and charming and then of course he had to learn uh, to balance it the sciences and poetry and music and astrology and astronomy and philosophy and in all of these he excelled but there came a moment when the king called his beloved son to him and said my son I'm now growing very old and you've been well prepared in your position to be king but like myself my father before me and my father before him you have to be tested to see your worthiness to take over this great task the king said down in the deep deep recesses of this palace there is a fierce tiger you must face and kill this tiger to prove your worthiness now at the very word tiger the prince's knees went to jelly because the one thing he feared in all of life was tigers in his youth he'd gone out riding a great elephant with his father on a hunt and he'd seen a man torn to pieces by a tiger ever since that time he lived in great fear of tigers he controlled himself and he said to his father can I see this tiger so his father the king took him down the winding labyrinthine stairways of the palace and came to a great door with a grill and the prince looked inside and there indeed was this huge fierce beast pacing backwards and forwards backwards and forwards in its confined area his heart froze inside of him and he began to sweat that night lying in his bed tossing and turning tossing and turning unable to sleep the fear was too great for him and he arose up out of his bed and dressing himself in the garment of a peasant he quietly made his way out of the palace and out of the palace gates and followed a path down the road 
thinking to himself that he could not return to his father's abode. But the day passed and he was hungry and thirsty and he saw a light in the distance that happened to be a farmhouse. So he went to that farmhouse and when the farmer opened the door he was invited in and given hospitality, a meal and invited to stay as long as he wanted. Well, for the few days, the prince felt as though he'd really found a haven. He was out working with the animals. The farmer and his wife and family were so affable and welcoming and embracing. But then, one night, he heard a scuffle outside his window. And when he got up to investigate, in the light, of the moon, he could see the two gleaming bright eyes and the sleek stripes of a tiger. Immediately the fear took over him again. He had no sleep at all for the rest of that night. When he got up in the morning and he said to the farmer, oh last night I was awoken and saw a tiger in the yard. Oh, said the farmer, this is common. We have tigers, tigers roaming around here all the time, but our animals are well housed, so they're protected. But the prince could not stay. That very day he thanked the farmer for his hospitality and took his leave making his way down the road again. After that day, he came to the far reaches of his father's realm. And at the far reaches of that realm, there was a fort with soldiers. So again, not wanting to be out at night, he went to the fort and when he was taken into the presence of the general who was in charge, he was again invited to the hospitality of that place. They welcomed him, they drank heartily and told stories throughout the night of their prowess and what they'd done in the war zones and on the battlefield. And the next day they went out hunting and had a great time. Well, the general said to the prince, you know, you proved yourself a worthy hunter and you're welcome to stay here as long as you like. And tomorrow we're having a very special day because my soldiers and I were going out on a tiger hunt. Again, the prince's legs turned to jelly and his heart turned to stone. And that very day he left that fort and left the realm of his father the king. But then he found himself in a strange kingdom. But making his way down the road that was there, he came across a magnificent palace. And to his very great surprise. The gates of the palace were opened to him and he was escorted in to the presence of the monarch of that kingdom himself, who invited him to stay, welcomed him, arranging a great feast and reception in his honor. Of course, the prince was very surprised, dressed as he was in his peasant's garb, but he did not question this hospitality. And this monarch again said to the prince, you're welcome, welcome to stay here as long as you want. The prince was very comfortable, but 
One day when he was walking down a corridor, it just so happened that the daughter of this monarch was walking unveiled towards her bathhouse. And when the prince caught a glimpse of this beautiful being, in an instant he was totally smitten. His heart evoked in him such longing. He wanted, oh, this, I want this being for my bride, for myself. So he went to the monarch of this realm and he said, I, I, I would beseech you, please, can I have your daughter as my bride? The monarch said, Yes, I think you are a worthy husband, <coughs> but you must go and ask the princess yourself. So the monarch said, she's now out in the garden feeding the fish in her fish pond. So the prince went out and there was his beloved. Having finished feeding her fish, she was sitting in a chaise lounge as beautiful as that glimpse of her had been. And since then, the pictures that he'd made in his mind of her and their union. But then he noticed beside her sitting was a huge tiger. His legs went to jelly, his heart again went to stone, and the words that were on his lips to speak, to beseech her to be his bride, were lost because his eyes could only fi fix on the great beast that lay beside her. In that instant, he recognized that there was no possibility that he could even dare to ask for this beautiful maiden's hand in marriage unless and until he faced the fear of doing what it was, as his father said, to face and kill the tiger. Taking his leave of the princess and thanking the monarch for his hospitality, the prince left that realm and made his way back now, of course, he had to pass the same pathway as the fort at which he'd had hospitality also. And when the <coughs> general greeted him, the general said, Are you going to face the tiger? How did you know? said the prince. The general said, Oh, I recognized you immediately. You're so much like your father when he was young. And it was known that you were afraid to face that which he had posed to you. Go with goodwill. Do what is there for <coughs> you to do. And then, of course, he came back to the farmer's house and the farmer, too, said to him, Oh, yes, I recognized you immediately. You're so much like your father when he was young. Go, face your tiger. The prince went back and getting down on his knees in front of his father, he apologized 
for his cowardice and said, Now, please, I'm ready. So <coughs> the king immediately called his courtiers to him and asked them to bring the sharpest dagger that they could find in their armory and a small shield to give to the prince to enable him to fulfill what it was that he, it was designated for him to do. And with great rejoicing of all the servants around, the prince with great resoluteness made his way again down the labyrinthine passageways of the great palace where the iron door with its grill was opened and the prince stepped in, the tiger pacing, growling back and forth in its confined space. Even though his heart was filled with trepidation and fear, he raised the dagger, ready to strike the tiger when it neared him. But instead of leaping on him, the tiger came and rubbed itself against his legs, purring, and then lay down in front of him, waiting for its belly to be scratched. Of course, the king and an entourage were outside the door observing this. And when the prince came out triumphantly with the tiger in tow beside him, there was great rejoicing by the king and those who were present. And the king said, This test I had to face my father and my, his father before him. You are now ready to take over this kingdom and rule it well. What do you imagine is the energetic, the theme that's present in those phone calls, emails and visitations, that which is there for all of us at this time. It's in the air, it's palpable, it manifests for all of us in one way or another, at one level or another. We all of us have to face our tiger. It may be asked, what is your tiger? But does it really matter what form it takes? We know ourselves what our tiger is. But what is it in this story that is greater than the fear of the prince? What is it that enabled him to say, I'm not worthy until I do this. What is it that's greater than fear in all of us? Love. Yes. It has many forms, doesn't it? But in all its forms, it's greater than fear. Isn't it so? We might give it another name, but its common name is love. Because it's a force greater than any fear that can manifest in our life. It's that force that can make a, 
mother or a father go into a burning house to save a child, to lift a car of a person who's been run over. But first, the tiger. And what is it that evokes that love in us, that force in us? What is it? You know, I have to tell you for myself, if Divine Mother had told me to go and jump off a cliff, I would have done it without giving it a second thought. That was how great the love I had for her. Without question, without a moment's hesitation. What is this force that's greater than even our own fear of death? Trust? Yes, all of those things. All of those things. food for pondering for a moment as we face our tigers. Thank you.